What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next I've got a bunch of bronze, silver, and golden age books to unbox. Stay tuned to check out some of these awesome books. Alright, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So, like I said, I've got three packages here, a bunch of just awesome gold, silver, bronze age books. I've got some, some uh, potential kind of like speculation type books in here, books that I think are good to pick up right now, as well as just some really fun keys. And uh, so it's a mix of raw books and graded books. There's Marvel, DC, Independent, kind of some, something for, for everyone in, in this one. So I'm gonna start with, uh, with this package here, which has raw books. And this is what really triggered me to, to do this unboxing right now is that, and, I, and I, I say this over and over again, whenever I'm buying raw books, I like to open them right away. And I had these other two boxes uh, that had been sitting around that I just hadn't had time to open yet. So I figured I'd just do them all at once. Uh, so I believe there should be two books in here. One of them I would call kind of a, a speculation book. Uh, the other one is a late to the game <laughs> speculation book, uh, but I, I thought it was a really good price, so, so I decided to, to pick that one up. And so this is, the, this is the, the late to the game speculation book, and I'm sure you will recognize this. Uh, this is Avengers number eight. And this is the first appearance of Kang the Conqueror. And so this has been really, ever since the, um, the Loki show, this has been the book that most people have been going after. There are a lot of different first appearances for Kang, uh, related books. There's the first appearance of him as a Mortis, which is uh, two issues later in Avengers number 10. Um, there, there's, there's the first appearance of him as Ramatut, which I can't remember, it's like Fantastic Four 19 or, or something like that. Um, but th there are a bunch of books that are out there that are potential like first appearances, but this is the main one that people are going for. I used to have two copies of this in a 7.5, and uh, I sold both of them right before the market went crazy and started uh, spiking books that had any type of speculation with them. Um, so this one seemed like a, a nice presenting copy and decided to pick them up. I thought it was a great price. And, you know, uh, say I'm, I'm, I'm back in the, in the Kang game now i have warned about this book i am very hesitant about this book because it's a it's a villain it's a character that i i don't think is a great super long-term investment but i think it's a good book to to buy and sell kind of in the midterm while we have kang in the storyline for the mcu now the second book this is a cool book i've never had a copy of this one before and i thought it was just it's it's a nice looking copy fun one to pick up and this is Amazing Adventures number 11. And this is the first appearance of the beast as the furry beast. So this is the first time he has all this fur on him. You notice it's, it's gray. He's wearing this awesome Speedo you know, on the cover there. Uh, but he's, he's gray beast here. He is not the, the blue beast yet. But this is the first time he has uh, fur. And so this is really, uh, to me, this is another spec book for the X-Men, for what we have coming in the future with the X-Men potentially in the MCU. And the Beast is always a big character that, that's involved in that. And so I think this is a, a great kind of like, I'll call it minor key or medium key for the Beast because his first appearance is X-Men number one. And that is obviously a very expensive book. And so getting one of these later first appearances, you know, a version of that character is a really good way to kind of get invested in that character uh, without having to spend thousands and thousands of dollars. This is a much more affordable book, uh, definitely down in the, the mid grades, um, but this is actually a pretty nice looking copy. Um, I think he graded it at an eight, and I'd say, yeah, that's a pretty, you know, it's a nice, the, the main flaw I can see is that little uh, fold down in the corner there. There's some, it's always tough to see in the mylar, but there are some spine bends and you know little things like that, but in general, a very nice presenting copy of this book. All right, so the next one that I'm gonna open here, this one has, this one has some cool books in it. It has one that I'm, uh, I, I've got a, a raw copy of, uh, then it's got another 
book that, that I, I recommended previously on the channel, the spec book, and I think is still a great book to pick up. Um, so, I guess the dreaded packing peanuts. So, let's see how... I was wondering why this one was so thick. Everything is individually wrapped in this one, because there weren't that many books. I think it was like four books. Um, I've never had them shipped like this, so it's it's nice, you know. They're all individually wrapped, but it just means it's uh, <laughs> more of a hassle for me to to open them. But yeah, I mean, can't ever complain about about the books being wrapped in package well. But let's see how they come out. All right, so this is the first one. This is one that I, I've shown a raw copy of this book in the past, and I just thought the price on this book was just too good to pass up. And this is Aliens number one. And this book is just notorious for being extremely difficult to get it in high grade. There are 604 graded copies. I, did, I looked up a little bit of stuff just so I could speak to a couple of these books. 604 graded copies out there, only 38 are in 9.8s. Now, obviously there are more in 9.4s, um, but, but a very difficult book to get in high grade because that, that black is just, is just brutal with this. Um, there's the back with Godzilla on the back. Um, but, uh, yeah, just, uh, I mean, 9.4 is a, is a really nice grade for this one. My, my raw copy, I'd say, is like an 8.5 to a 9. So getting a, you know, getting a copy in a 9.4 is, is just awesome. Now, I've mentioned this before. This book, uh, the reason I think this one's fun is because I, one of the, the first early, like, horror movies I saw as a kid was Aliens. And it was definitely before I should have been allowed to watch it because it scared me for years. I was just, I was afraid of this exact scene, aliens coming out of the ceiling. I was afraid of like corners and the dark in the ceiling for years because of this movie, because they just, you know, that's where they'd pop out and grab people and all that kind of thing. And it uh, just scared the crap out of me. <laughs> so, um, but but I, that's why I think that is such a such a cool cover for, uh, for this franchise. And because Marvel has picked up the, uh, they, they now have the rights to that property there's a lot of potential in the future for that, for aliens. So I think that's a, it's a really good also, I would call it like a spec, is picking up aliens related books because they definitely could be something that you get more properties in the future and there's a lot more interest in them. All right, now this, this is a cool golden age book. So this one is another one where I just thought the price was just too cheap Head, head by it, and this is Startling Comics number 46. Now, this is from the same run. If uh, if you have watched my channel in the past, you know an uh, artist that I talk about a lot is Alex Schomburg, and he did a number of issues uh, that started basically like right after this. And, uh, and so there are these airbrush art type issues. This one is not a Schomburg cover, but this is a cool Golden Age skull cover. And, you know, this is 1947, so very early Golden Age. You've got the, you know, attractive woman in the wet red dress, which is also a very common in the, in the Golden Age. And it's a low grade, it's a 2.0, but presents well. You know, that's what I look for with these low grade books. There's no notes, so everything is attached, which is a big plus. Um, the back cover, you can tell, is a little beat up, but really not missing any big pieces or anything. Just a, a very nice 2.0. And, uh, you know, it's it's classified on the top there as a bondage cover, which is just Those are those elements that you want to look for with Golden Age books that tend to be very popular You've got skulls. You've got, you know, a bondage cover. You've got an attractive woman on the cover Just all those things that are, are, are great elements for these books um, the, the, the big book from this run is Startling Comics number 49 That's that Bender cover with the robot that looks like Bender from Futurama um, so I have I have a copy of 48, I have a, a nice high grade copy of 48, and then now I have this copy of 46, which is again, just a, a cool book that I, I thought was just too cheap, <laughs> so I decided to pick it up. All right, so which one is this? Oh yeah, okay. So this is another book that I have never had a copy of before. So uh, this, is, this is an early Silver Age Avengers book. This is Avengers number nine which is the first appearance of Wonder Man, and just uh, one of these great floating head uh, Jack Kirby covers. You'll, you'll see this a lot throughout the Silver Age, these floating head type covers. 
Uh, they get used all over the place. Um, but this first appearance of Wonder Man, the guy right in the center there, there was a lot of spec on this character earlier this year as part of WandaVision. People thought they were seeing little hints that this character was going to show up. So these books had kind of exploded earlier in the year, but they've come back down some, but there's still, it's a, you know, it's an early Silver Age Marvel book from 1964, first appearance, uh, you know, and it looks, looks pretty nice. I, I'd have to see if I think this one's been pressed. It probably has. I don't know if it would get above a 6.5, but it is a very nice presenting uh, 6.5. You can see a little bit of dimpling there, but uh, someone mentioned this in the past, that that could be what's called like paper memory, where sometimes some of those, those pressable defects uh, show themselves again. And uh, so after some amount of time, sometimes they come back. Now, I, I don't know why that happens. I don't know if it's certain pressing techniques that people use, that kind of thing, or if it's because uh, I, I definitely I don't think I see it with everything uh, so I wonder if it's certain ages of books you know if there's certain types of paper because that's one thing you'll notice if you uh, if you've had books from the you know modern bronze silver gold the paper changes a lot based on publishers based on time periods and that's why a lot of these golden age books they the paper is really thick and so that's why you can you can actually see how if somebody just left books in a pile that they they would keep some pretty high grades because those covers the cover stock on those golden age books is so much thicker all right so this next one this one is definitely one that i call a, a spec and and i know I've, I've had some people comment on this before that that they don't think the books that i mention are, are specs but the way i look at speculation books is different than i think a lot of what other people look at a lot of people will, will think a speculation book is a book that is one that's like a dollar bin book or a, you know it's a five dollar book something that hasn't popped yet but to me i think of a spec i like to look at speculation books as books that just have a lot of room to run potentially in moving forward whether they're dollar books or thousand dollar books and i prefer to purchase the ones that are already bigger keys because there's limited risk there. It's, al it's already a book that a lot of people want. It's in high demand. It has a high baseline value. It's not a book that's gonna be a dollar and stay a dollar if nothing happens and then you're just stuck with boxes and boxes of dollar books. You know, It's a book that maybe it's worth $300 or $500 and if nothing happens, it's still worth three to $500 and you can sell it and move on and, and go to something else if that's what you want just because there's a lot of built-in demand for it. So I, I prefer picking up books like that. All right, and this book is X-Men number 10. And this is the first appearance of Kazar. It's also the first appearance of Zabu, you know, the saber-toothed tiger down in the corner there. But the big thing with this one, the reason that I consider this a spec book, and I mentioned this in my, my I think it was like my top 10 X-Men books. This was the most uh, undervalued book in my opinion. Um, and so it's that this is the first appearance of the Savage Lands. And I think the Savage Lands are an area where we could definitely see that used in the MCU. We haven't seen the Savage Lands really as, as something that's been used in any of the other X-Men properties. And so I think that's something that, that maybe that's an angle they could take with this. It's also something that's been used in more recent Marvel storylines. And so I, I think it's not necessarily so much for, for Kazar. Um, I mean, it's possible they could use him, but I think that the Savage Lands and the characters that the Savage Lands bring, like Sauron, uh, I think that could potentially be a place where, where, you get, uh, where, where you get this as a spec book. But this is where I'm talking about, this is still X-Men number 10. You know, it's a, it's a super early Silver Age X-Men book. It's a, a multiple first appearance. All the X-Men are on the cover. Uh, Kazar's on the cover. And uh, then you can see here, I'll show the, the splash page because it's got a cool splash page. Uh, so here's the splash page. You've got Kazar right there with Zabu and just, yeah, awesome, awesome first appearance book. And so I think this is one that is a, a really good option for picking up as a, a spec type book. Now it's gotten, it has gotten more expensive recently, but I still think it's a, a very reasonable book to, uh, to pick up. Now, like I've mentioned previously, one of the things that is always important to do, and obviously I'll, I'll do this with the uh, Avengers 8 and Amazing Adventures 11 as well, but it's always important to check the interior, no matter who you're buying from, to make sure that it's got all the pages, there aren't any cutouts, and it's what you expect the book to be. So, uh, so the thing you always wanna do is with these Silver Age books, 
they're considered 36 pages. When I say 36 pages, it means sides of the paper, and that includes the front and back cover. So one quick, so you can either count each side or you, you say you've got the cover, and then you go eight pages in, then you should see the centerfold, then another eight pages. So there's eight pages in, and then we've got, you can see the centerfold there with the staples attached. Then another eight pages, and you've got the back cover. And that's where, you know, you, you look for things like color touch, that kind of thing. You know, you just just check for, with, with color touch, the, the most common type is gonna be amateur color touch, where someone took a Sharpie or something like that. So just look for what basically looks like bleed through of ink onto the interior cover. Now, there can definitely be what I'll call false positives with color touch like that. Uh, sometimes it's just really heavy ink from the printer, or if there was a, a crease there, uh, the, the ink seems to push its way through the paper, and so you can kind of see some, uh, some bleed through on the other side. So it's important to also check the front and see if it's a place where it looks like there should be a crease and there isn't one. Um, that, that's, that's one of the, the big things to always remember to check just because it's one of the most obvious types of restoration that's out there. And so color touch, when you've got some bleed through, it'll, it'll kill you on the value of the book. So definitely always something to check. And really anytime you've got like a black cover, so like, like this one, like this Amazing Adventures, this one you always wanna check. Now this one, you can see some of the back is showing, so you've got white along the spine. But if this had been a perfect wrap where you had black along the spine, that's where somebody would be really tempted to try to touch up any spine ticks to make it look like it's a super clean copy. All right, now I've got one more box here and there are a few more books in here. There's some, again, some cool books in this one. I've got some, uh, I, I know there's at least one more independent book uh, in here, but there is also uh, just some, some cool golden age. And there's, there's, a, there's an awesome Bronze Age book in here I'm really excited about. Uh, so, uh, box inside of a box. So we've got another box here. And... So again, packaged very safely. Now this one... This one is just one big one big block of, of books. So we'll cut open this and see what we got. All right, first one here, I just thought, I thought this went, again, and most of the time that's my reasoning. I think it goes too cheap and so I decided to pick it up and I thought this is just, I, I've, I've been unboxing these more often recently and I'm not a huge Archie fan or anything. It's just, I, they seem like good deals and I like the ones that are from the 40s. I like getting ones from the 40s. This is an early one. This is Archie number eight and it's from 1944. And the, the cool thing about this one is that there are only 23 graded copies on the census. This is not a common book to come across. And not only that, the highest graded copy on the census is a 5-0. So this is a 3.0. That means this is this is close to the highest graded copy, you know. So it, and plus you've got Betty, you've got Veronica on the cover. You know they've got them in you know attractive outfits and that kind of thing, which is always kind of a plus for Archie books. Those are the types of things you'll want to look for with the covers for Archie. But number eight, 1944, a 3.0, a nice presenting copy because you can see on the note there it has a detached cover. Um, so that's the main reason why it's getting that grade. Otherwise, it, it presents really, really well. So 3.0 Early Archie. All right. And the second book is also an Early Archie. <laughs> and uh, this is Archie number 17. And this one doesn't have Betty or Veronica on the cover, so that's a, a little downside for this book. But this one, there's only 33 copies on the census. Now, this one's gonna be maybe a little less desirable book, one that's not gonna be graded quite as often, but a 5.5 puts it over the top 50%. It's actually in the top 40% of books at a 5.5. So this is a very nice copy of this book. 
and uh, you can see it's it looks it looks really clean. You know, this is a clean looking book. I'd have to I'd have to take a look at it. I think let's see, does it have a chip? No, no chip. I mean, yeah, it's a it's a nice looking book. It doesn't look like it's been pressed, so maybe it has some potential. I'd have to decide if it's worth it. So it doesn't look like it's been pressed, but it's got these kind of like scratches. That's, uh, let's see, those horizontal scratches you see on the cover, right in the center, right above the tree there. And so I think those would probably keep it from getting much higher, but still a, a very nice presenting book. Again, early, early Archie. This one's from 1945. And so those books, especially from like the World War II era, those are ones I really like to pick up. All right, now this next one is really beat up, but I, I just, I, I had to pick this one up. Um, you don't get not you don't get the opportunity to buy this book for cheap very often. Now it's a low grade copy. I mean, it's probably like a 2.0 or something like that. Um, but this is Batman number 251. And this is, uh, you can see back here, I have a, a 9 of that one right there. This is one of my favorite Batman covers. It's a Neil Adams cover. Uh, this is when Joker basically goes from being more of a clown, comical type character to evil, like an evil character, <laughs> you know? And, and so uh, this is just, this is a, a classic cover, awesome cover. I, I think this is basically a book that anybody who's a, a Batman collector wants to have this book. And since I think usually you don't come across this book raw, most of the times they're, they're graded now, I'll... Uh, the opening splash page. I want to be careful with it because the, the top staple is torn out. I think the bottom one is still attached. Um, but uh, let's see here. So this opening splash page is really cool. So there you go. So I mean, like, look at that. Like, that is awesome. Just awesome opening splash page. Great art in this book. Um, just a really, really cool book. So I mean, I mean, even Batman looks awesome in here. I mean, look at some of this interior art. Like, look at that like this is this is incredible interior art as well with this book so super cool book uh, and and like i said just a book that for any batman collector they're gonna want a copy of this now i, I haven't decided yet what i'm gonna do with this book this this isn't a book that i would you know really go send to get graded this is a book that if i was gonna sell it i'm, I'm just gonna sell it raw but i've been thinking about there's somebody i know that's a that's a big batman fan that i've been thinking of giving this to uh but but i'll, I'll have to see I'll, I'll have to see what i'm gonna do with it but yeah just a really cool neil adams joker cover for batman all right got a few more books in here this next one this is one you, you won't see very often uh, so this is at least not in this grade. Um, so this is the crow number three, but in a nine eight. This book just it does not exist in a nine eight. There are twelve copies in this grade, 163 total copies graded, and you can see why. I mean, look at this thing. It's like just black on black on black, and they. They just, they did not want people to be able to get this book <laughs> in a high grade or keep it in a high grade. I mean, it just, just ridiculous. Now I'd love to get a copy of Crow number one in this type of grade, but that book has gotten to like, I don't know what it is now, seven, $8,000. This one isn't cheap, but it is, uh, it is more affordable and still a really, you know, cool cover him on the front with that X and just, I mean, these books are all extremely difficult to get in this kind of grade and this one. It just it looks incredible and it and it really looks like a legit 9-8 i mean i don't see anything wrong with this book because that's something where sometimes you know they'll allow certain amounts of color rub and all that and i see like one maybe one spine tick on the back by a staple but i mean just an incredible copy of this book so i thought that was too cool to to, to not pick up now let's see the uh, next one here i've shown I think I've maybe shown a copy of this before a long time ago in an unboxing. It was, I have a raw copy of this book that I'm thinking of getting graded. Um, but this is Marvel Superheroes number 12. And this is the first appearance of Captain Marvel, not the Captain Marvel that we know of as Carol Danvers. Her, Carol Danvers' first appearance is actually Marvel Superheroes number 13, the book right after this. But it's the first appearance of the original Captain Marvel. 
And so uh, just a cool Silver Age book, 1967. Another one of these that, that can be tough to get in higher grade because they're these uh, square bound books tend to take a lot of damage along the spine. Now, there are definitely more of this one than uh, Marvel Super Heroes 13. Marvel Super Heroes 13 is much, much more rare in high grade. Uh, this one, uh, there are there are more of them. So it, it doesn't carry near the, nearly the level of value that uh, Marvel Super Heroes number 13 has, but still cool first appearance book, Silver Age. It had gotten really expensive when I think people were originally speculating on who Captain Marvel was going to be, which version it was going to be. Um, definitely dropped off once it was revealed that it was Carol Danvers, but, but still, it's a Silver Age first appearance. Cool book to get. Now this last one, it's the last uh, book that I'll call kind of like another spec book. And I think this book is really undervalued for what it is. This is Late Bronze Age, and it's Marvel Premiere number 47. So a nice grade copy, this is a, a 9.4, but this is the first appearance of Scott Lang as Ant-Man. Now the first appearance of Scott Lang, it's very similar to what you get with uh, Hank Pym, where his first appearance is Tales to Astonish 37, and his first appearance as Ant-Man in costume is Tales to Astonish 35. It's very similar with, with Scott Lang. He has a first appearance as just Scott Lang in another book, and this one is his first appearance as Ant-Man. And it's a cool first appearance cover. You know, he's on the cover, in the costume, riding on the back of an ant, you know, just a, a cool book. And I, I just, I've always felt that this book is really undervalued, especially for how popular these, uh, this character has been in the movies, how much he's been used, especially as Giant Man. He's had some great roles. And so just, a, I think this was a, a great book and a good speculation book with future Ant-Man movies coming you know we've got quantum mania coming up and so this is the type of book that that i would recommend trying to pick up leading into that movie so that's all the books i picked up a, a quite a, a, a pile of stuff i've got i've got a lot of books here i think some some cool books some golden age books some you know bronze and silver some speculation type books as well as just some you know, some, some solid keys. So if you enjoyed this, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. I've got more videos over here if you'd like to watch some of my other videos and the subscription button right here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it and I will see you in the next video.